Hey everybody, Karen Bryan for MMA Heat speaking with Ian Heinisch who is facing Gerald Mearshart at UFC 250. Ian, there's so much going on in the world right now. Um, has it been difficult for you to focus on fight week in light of not only COVID but protests and just all kinds of things going on in the world? Yeah, you know, a little bit. Like uh, I caught myself last week and just watching the news because I didn't realize what was going on and then I had a PT meeting downtown and um, I just had to go all the way around and protesters and just, yeah, it was pretty wild. And so, yeah, I got off basically, uh, deleted Facebook on my phone and just been trying to stay off social media and not watching the news. Cause obviously there's a lot of stuff going on and it's an issue that needs to be addressed. But at the moment I need to focus on winning this fight. And, uh, my wife did an amazing thing. She, she had everyone who supports me and usually is here, write a letter for me. And so I've been reading a few letters each day, and that's been kind of keeping me off social media. Nice. Well, Joni is a sweetheart. For folks who don't know, Ian has the sweetest wife on the planet. She's a doll. Uh, so tell yeah. her that. Um, <laughs> Hello. So listen, though, this is an important fight for you, Ian. I don't know, um, you know yeah. going into this one, when you look at this matchup with Gerald, he's a guy that um, goes a lot of rounds, right? Like, he's not a person that is easy to get rid of, but the same can be mm -hmm. said for you. So what do you make of this matchup? Yeah, you know, it's it's a good matchup. You know, he's he's tough, he's durable, he's experienced. So I honestly think I just need to be uh, the smarter fighter. And, mm -hmm. you know, his, his downfall has kind of been really aggressive wrestlers. And I've really, truly brought my wrestling back this camp. And um, I feel like I can really uh, make him scramble a lot and just be a violent wrestler. And uh, for me, I think that's the key to winning and just mix everything up and be intelligent in there with my energy management. And with Brunson, obviously you've fought wrestlers before then. So does that give you any um, sort of encouragement going in? Because that was a close fight. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like the first round when I felt good, you know, I felt like I dominated. And mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, I, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot more than anything with uh, Omari and Brunson. I learned so much and just I feel like I'm finally coming in my own and you know, being thrown in the top 20 um, immediately in the UFC, you know, it, it, it takes a little bit to get um, comfortable in there. And so I feel I'm going to be comfortable in there and I feel I'm just going to have to be a smarter fighter against uh, Merchart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Like you look at, a, let's say, somebody like Angela Hill, right? When she first got in, thrown to the wolves and it didn't always mm -hmm. go her way. And then it took some time and now the woman is just firing on all cylinders. So there's definitely yes. something to be said for that. That Yeah, that that's also something, though, that you had to feel like, wow, they believe in me if they're already giving me this high level competition so so quickly, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, big shout out to my management, Jason House and Iridium and, yeah. um, you know, Mick and Mick's been so great. And Dana and Sean, like, mm -hmm. and I got a new four fight contract coming off losses, which is huge. Nice. And it just shows that they do believe in me and uh, I stand by the company and um, I appreciate them really. Nice. Well, this matchup is good for you, though. Um, you have some history in terms of a teammate here uh, from Iridium. Eric has fought Gerald Mearshart. Uh, Eric Anderson, yeah. he was successful. They had a close fight as well, though. Um, was there any insight that you were able to get from Eric leading into this one? Uh, yeah, a little bit. You know, he just kind of told me how the fight went and just, you know, how, you know, Gerald seems very slow, but he does have heavy hands. So, you know, just don't underestimate him. And uh, just I just got to be focused and you know just all the changes and everything going on I found such a great team and mm -hmm. uh, just a small group of guys that have been pushing me so hard every day and yeah. uh, so I feel really really prepared for this fight nice. and you are in Denver now um, but you spent a lot of time in Thailand right so I want to talk about this mm -hmm. because are you in fact going to be moving there yeah correct so uh, we're actually going to be leaving early July back to Thailand and that was the plan to move there earlier. I know it's uh, it's a huge. huge change. Yeah, it's huge, but it's amazing, and I'm super excited. So is my wife, and yeah. Uh, yeah, we were supposed to be there, and I was supposed to fight May 16th in San Diego, and we were supposed to move uh, earlier, but yeah. obviously with the quarantine and stuff like that, and so came back to Denver, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of just let God just kind of direct me to the right people, reach out to some training partners, and found a group of like six studs that were just uh, solid for me every day and found some coaches that were willing to take the risk and train us. And are you, do you feel comfortable saying who that is? Like, who were you training with? Yeah, so um, uh, uh, Nate Marquardt a lot, yep. Grant Neal, who's a Bellator fighter, Andrew Capel, another Bellator fighter, yep. Anthony Adams, who's fighting on Contender Series coming oh. up, and uh, Boyan, who is a UFC vet, yep. um, and 
and uh yeah and just and you know kind of uh been training with uh, jake ramos from genesis and, and peter straub from team elevation so nice. just kind of mixing together it's it's been a weird time right now obviously and you know it just kind of has brought like uh some people that are just hungry to mm -hmm. fight and make money and uh it brought us all together mm -hmm. so it's been great and nate's been talking about a comeback anyway right yeah nate is going to make a comeback and we're actually going to thailand on the same flight nice very cool. Yeah. Well, so what what is it about Thailand? I haven't been uh, personally, but I do want to go there. And obviously, you, we know mm. the, the the history there uh, with Muay Thai. But what is it that is different about it, right? Because you do see people going over there to train, and not only does it look different, and obviously it's got to feel different, just the air, the humidity, training on the beach, whatever. Mm. But like, what did it do for you to be such a galvanizing thing that you you need to move there? <laughs> yeah. Well. For me, you know, uh, first off, I love the ocean. The beach is, um, I'm a beach guy and, and, you know, I need that. And, you know, it's been great. I love the mountains too, but just the cold weather. And it was kind of getting to the point too, where I felt like I would always train and then I'm driving in traffic to my next training session, yeah. eating in my car. And it just, you know, just doing that, leaving at eight in the morning, coming home at eight thirty at night, you know, mm -hmm. it was just wearing on me. And I, I was doing a lot of other stuff too, you know, speaking at schools and speaking, um, you know, at, at programs and rehabs and all that stuff, and which is so great. That's my passion of mine. But to be the best in the world is something, you know, you really have to isolate and focus all your energy and attention. So, yeah. you know, is, 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 I, I don't want to say it was a distraction, but I feel like it was, you know, and, and it, you know, if you don't focus everything on something to become the best in the world, you know, I feel like you can fall short a little bit. Yeah. And especially coming off those two losses and, I went out to Thailand for five weeks and I felt it was just a reset thing. Yeah. And, but I fell in love with the coaches and the gym and the scenery and just the lifestyle out there. People are so nice. And it's literally a street where there's two, two MMA gyms, about yeah. 12 Muay Thai gyms, uh, CrossFit gyms, and then just hotels and massage and healthy right. restaurants. And, um, so it's just all fight street. Like it's <laughs> just all about fighting. And then on the weekend I can go down, uh, my day off, I can go to the beach and get that reset that I right. so need and come back charged and excited. It just gave me a new passion for what I love, which is fighting. And yeah. it sparked that up. And I felt like God was calling us out there. And here we go. Yeah, you don't have to tell me twice about the cold weather. Um, you know, <laughs> Wade's from Denver. And I told him when we first even started dating, I was like, yeah, I'm never going to live here. <laughs> Yeah, right. So I feel you on that one. Yeah, summers are great, but yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But cold. you know, um, it is interesting. It is a reset button, and it is all these things. And, you know, something that's been so great about you, Ian, all along is that you are so honest about where you've been in your life and what you've been through and how you've been able to turn things around. And when you um, when you look at your fighting stuff, though, d are you able to be as honest with yourself? Like, are you able to, to know when you look back and go, well, I did kind of half-ass it through that camp and I didn't really do this enough. Like, was it, when you look back on the fights that didn't go your way, are you are you able to honestly see something that you didn't do right? Or was it just that that night it didn't go right for you? Um, you know, yeah, it, it wasn't like I ever thought I half-assed the camp because when I, wherever I was at training, you know, I was present and I was training as hard as I can, but it's a lot of like with Brunson too, like uh, that fight, I felt like I, I wasn't feeling good coming to fight week. And then it was just so much media. And it was like, I had like 30 fans in the, in the lobby every time I went down there and I just leaked energy in so yeah. many places, not intentionally, but I almost felt obligated a little bit to see everyone who came to visit me. And yeah. um, so, you know, I was, you know, I was stressing about things that weren't um, as important as going out there and winning that fight. And mm -hmm. um, I felt like that was with training, you know, I would be, training here then training there instead of going home and taking a nap and getting ready for the next training session yeah. i'm going to a school to speak and i have to organize all this stuff i'm on my phone all the time and you know I, i'm mentoring some kids so they're always you know calling me which i love but mm -hmm. at the same time i felt so isolated in thailand and i felt like it kind of cleared my head and let me absorb technique more let me absorb like the, the the full training and the concepts and mm -hmm. i felt like i grew a big like in a short amount of time i grew so much and i felt like uh you know this is where i need to be for this next part of my career nice nice well i love it it's exciting um major plans and you said you just signed a new four fight deal so this is the first fight on the new four fight contract correct 
Nice, 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 nice. And yeah. I'm sure, I know that uh, Jason, you know, he's always plotting back there and all of this stuff. So yeah. I'm sure yeah. you, you have it. But I mean, like, do you have names in mind? Um, you get your hand raised on Saturday night. You have names in mind that you want to call out? Um, You know, yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm just, I need to get back in that winning call, put on yeah. a performance, you know, and I had to do some soul searching and, you know, realize that this is what I love and I need to go out there and do what I love mm -hmm. and perform and instead of so worried about wins or losses or rankings or money or who's mm -hmm. next. So I've, but if I was um, going to say someone after this fight, I want to climb the rankings again. I want to put on a great performance. I want to show that I belong being a ranked fighter in the UFC mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe someone like Uriah Hall or basically anyone ranked that I haven't fought and that I'm just looking down the list. So I would like to start climbing the rankings again. So yeah, if that's a name that you want, then there you go. Cool. It's a good one too. It's a real good one. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, listen, um, let you get focused and stay focused and, and, you know, maybe to, to your point about the, the distractions and leaking the energy, this will be advantageous for you this week, having less to do. So, right. And having yeah. to sort of be in your room more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it definitely can be a good thing you know we're not in all the bright lights in the casino like right. even for a person like me who doesn't drink um even just being in vegas drains you it's yeah. like the smoke i don't know all the um just everything is just overstimulating it really is and um so it's pretty cool to be in like an apartment and just chilling. It's kind of boring, but at the same time, I know it's it's going to be good on Saturday. I think so as well. And I don't want to put you right on the spot, um, but Ian, I know you are a man of great faith, and you know there mm -hmm. are hard times out there right now, and um, just sort of across the board for people who are feeling lost or hopeless or anything. Do you have anything positive that you could share for us, Ian? Because I I feel like you do. Yeah, you know, absolutely, and and just kind of, you know for being someone who's been around this world, like, you know, in America, if you haven't left the country, we do have it pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's definitely has problems and there are issues that need to be addressed. But at the same time, if you go to South America or Asia, like you've never seen corrupt, dangerous police like that. Like there are some that are really scary out there. You would know. <laughs> and yes, yes. And, and I've been in this situation. I've had a gun pulled to my head just because I was white in the car um, with a bunch of Colombians and, you know, uh, by the police and robbed and, and, and hit with the gun and stuff like that. So I've been there and, um, you know, I, I just feel like, uh, if you're promoting division, just please stop. Like we need to unite, come together, find a better way to make these changes that need to be made. I, I fully understand and my, and my heart felt for all the people that are, yeah. uh, you know, George dying and all the other people that have, have been affected by this. Mm -hmm. I'm totally with you. But I just feel like let's not create division. You know, we're all the human race. Uh, we're all under one God. I feel like everyone needs to seek, uh, you know, God more because he's the one who's going to um, direct us and guide us and throw these corrupt government out. And I feel like people should be rioting more to throw out the news and the media, like switch all them out because they're creating more division and they're they're feeding us lies and they have an agenda. And, and everyone knows it, but some people just still – just sit there and listen to it. And it's hard when it's just over and over. So I just feel like come together, people, let's unite, let's figure this out together. We're strength in numbers and we're all wanting basically the same thing. We want change. And so just stop promoting division. Well, Ian, thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. And I do appreciate your time this week. And I know it's an important fight for you. Um, and you always show up you always you always give your best like that at least i know you don't phone it yes. in so um yes. really really appreciate that and uh, just be safe if you are going out at all in vegas you know take care be safe and uh just really looking forward to watching you and gerald throw down on saturday yeah well yeah guys tune in ufc 250 this saturday and uh you know i always go out there to put on a performance and uh, i'm excited to entertain all the fans at home watching and give them a little escape from all the craziness and <laughs> Unite, seek Jesus Christ, and uh, thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you again. All right, Ian. Take it easy. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye.